uh, scientists have found that those elements that have um, less amount of electrons in their outer layer uh, of orbit, right? Because we have protons in the center and then electrons uh, going around in circles around it. In its atomic structure, uh, it's said to be that the inner structure of electrons can only be two, right? So we have two electrons in the inner circle, the first inner circle. Then the second circle, we can put up to eight electrons, right? So that equals 10. Third layer can equal up to 18, which that makes it 28. Then the last layer can be up to 32. And it could be more because there's, there's more elements that have more than uh, 60 uh, electrons. Atoms want to balance themselves out. So they need to have uh, the same amount of protons and same amount of electrons in its... Uh, in its atom. Since it has one electron in its outermost layer of orbit, it's easier to get knocked off into being a free electron. So, so what happens, it's, um, if you have an, another copper atom that's 28 electrons, it's going to want to pull the electron, the extra electron from the other element. And so since, you know, there's a bunch of uh, atoms composed of 29 electrons, it's going to want to pull it from, from them. And so that's how electricity works. It pulls electrons through its atoms, right? And it does it in, almost instantaneously, right? So that's why this is more of a theoretical aspect, but it, it happens in, in a flick of a second, right? That's the flow of electricity. It's knocking off electrons from one atom to another and moving them through through a through a cable, you know, if you have more amperage, right, let's say you had a smaller battery, it, it would create the, it would create heat, right, the more that you have amperage, then you create more heat, because you're having to, for example, if I were to carry 600 pounds, then I would like be struggling, right, so it's, it's creating uh, like tension and friction, uh, because it's having to work harder to pass that electricity if it has a, a lower voltage uh, battery. If you're creating heat, then uh, that could potentially wear out or burn out. I remember yeah. doing that in high school uh, physics class too, in the labs, like doing simple circuits. But it's crazy to me how, you know, you start with something simple like that when they first discovered electricity. And now here we are decades later and we have extremely advanced complicated circuits but really, it, when it comes down to it, it's just a simple circuit. All of these complicated cars and computers and machines and the Zoom call we're doing right now, it all comes down to circuits, which is a simple series of combinations of wires and metal that's plugged into a wall, which is the same thing, combination of metal and wires and electricity that forms these complicated things that we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you put it in that format, like you start thinking, it's almost like what we were talking about in the previous podcast from last week where you know you start questioning reality it's like well you know if everything is just metals bulbs and wires it's all really then <laughs> what is reality it's right? all the computer is right now our perception of reality of talking to each other in a conversation is just the culmination of pieces of metal and electricity and electrons i mean if you put rags with oil and you just put them on a pile they can burn they like without moving, they'll they'll start catching on fire what? or like smoking. And that's because like the in a in a like molecular level, everything's still vibrating. So like the oh. oil is still like moving, you know, uh and creating a little bit of friction at a very molecular oh. level. I didn't know and that. So that little friction is almost like the little eraser, right? That is just like uh creating more friction. And so and that's why the racks, they have to put them in a, in a metal container so that it contains a possible fire. I wonder and if so, that's, what, uh, that's what makes oil more flammable is that, that uh, friction and vibration that you're talking about. It's really weird. You know, it's like when you start diving into what makes things the way they are, it, it gets kind of strange. It's almost like you're uncovering a, a veil that has covered the way things are. It's like looking behind the curtain, behind the scenes of reality. One has to be careful because like you could conduct the electricity through your body. 
So because we're, we're good conductors, I start thinking about this and maybe how previous civilizations might have used human beings as batteries. I mean, I, I'm thinking like, you know, something along the lines of the matrix, you know, how computers started being, oh, yeah. getting too smart and then they started using actual human beings to power. Yeah. Like batteries to power their, their civilizations. And so is there like something at a molecular level that human beings can carry electrical current or like, or maybe we just carry emotions, right? Like we can conduct emotions or, or we can conduct other, other things like thoughts. A lot of people think that we are like antennas and that, you know, God is like a, like an all knowing thing or like a little, a, a cloud that's everywhere and ev like anywhere and everywhere. And then we can tap into that, that to, to God or that consciousness and be receptive to it right and receive ideas i mean the transfer of like cells like things in and out of cells has to do with electric charges and stuff of the elements all that really? yeah like um wow i can't remember what it was it's been a long time since i've taken biological psychology so yeah, i'm trying to remember there i think there's like chlorine chloride ions or something that get transferred in and out of the cell I know there's some type of electrical thing involved with um, with the way with the way uh, neurons function. You know that synaptic gap. There's electric charges that go between the synaptic gap between neurons between dendrites and axons. And so, like there is some type of electrical uh, reaction that has to peak up and then peak down. I think it's called uh, I mean, I think it's called the electric potential or something like that. But once the neuron reaches that electric charge and then it dips down right away. So, so it's limited, you know, it's, it's limited. Once it reaches that peak, it has to have a refractory period before it can have another chemical electrical reaction. So yeah, that's in our brains all the time. It's just, yeah, it, that's how electrical appliances function with electricity as well. And we also function with electricity and yeah, every atom. And, it, and it's interesting because like what you're saying is like, we, we maybe but like, because people like might be hearing this and think like, well, that's a chemical like reaction. And yes, like chemical reactions can also cause electricity to happen. Like, like electricity is not just, you know, with like batteries, like batteries are also chemicals like within them, you know? And so 